Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. Yes, so in this week's video we're going to be looking at replacing the window trim. Uh, in a previous video obviously I was showing you how to repair it um, and again the majority of the time that will probably be what you need um, but there will be times where actually that doesn't work as I sort of stated in that previous video um, and you will need to replace it. So in this video I'm just going to go through the process of showing you exactly what you need to do for that. Um, like I say, it's not rocket science, it's just about just making sure you've got the right tools and to make it as easy as possible for you. Um, so yeah, we'll just sort of walk through that process, get that replaced and then we'll sort of show you a before and after. But um, yeah, we'll get cracking. So in terms of things you're going to need, and I'll go through each one as we get to them, but obviously I've got some replacement window trim, I've got some silicon spray, a bit of cloth just in case you put too much silicon spray on, screwdriver obviously to get the latches off. I've got a trim feeding tool just to make it easier um, for the majority but again that won't do the corners that easily so again you will need to work at that and that's why I've got a bit of the silicon spray just to make that process a bit easier and then the masking tape is just to give me a guide of where the catches were um, just so again I can put those back um, and punch the holes through easy enough and always please consider subscribing to the channel so it is the front window and it is this section that I've had problems with in terms of the other side here that one was fine I had no issues with that and that was that was just heated up and put back into place without any issues um, but this one this corner is the one that's given me grief and has slowly come back um, so I've just started pulling that out um, but um, yeah so what I'm going to do now is get some masking tape and I just want to mask it here and then just make a little reference of where it starts and finishes for these catches just so again once we've put the new trim in place obviously these will just go back um, and then hopefully when we screw down it will just go back into the existing holes um, but again it's just for guidance on that. Okay, so I've got the masking tape in place and all I've done is just given it a little line to represent where, give or take, where these ends are. So when this is in place, I can get it back. And it should realistically line up with these hinges anyway, but again, it's just that extra reference. I've done that all the way around. But um, obviously, yeah, use masking tape, not cellar tape, because again, you don't you don't want to rip any of this existing wallpaper. And again, use a good masking tape, because again, if you get cheap masking tape, it's really like cellar tape. And what you could do is either damage this again by ripping this, or actually leaving the stickiness actually back on this, which will cause you another problem. So yeah, use a, a decent masking tape. But again, like I say, that's all done and on. So I'm now just going to unscrew all these catches, get them out of the way, just so okay, we can get on and um, get this trim removed. So when you are unscrewing these, again, you just need to use a screwdriver. Don't use a, an electric drill, because what you'll more than likely do is actually thread the actual um, screw holes and cause you more problems. Um, and also, if you're not careful, you could damage the actual inner plastic uh, to the window itself. So yeah, just take your time and uh, yeah, just use a normal screwdriver, that's all you need. Once you've got to this state, obviously you can get to these ones. Um, 
obviously to get to the top ones you will need to push the window out um, so yeah just be obviously give it some extra support when you're doing that and, and obviously once you've got to the other side obviously this one's gonna not be there so again it's crucial that yeah you do continue to give the window some support what you don't want to do is just to put too much pressure on the other side whilst you're unscrewing it And when you're taking these off, try and sort of put them back down, see, and, and obviously put back the one where you've got it from, put it back to where it was. Obviously, these ones obviously have got a shim in as well. So again, there's two pieces to that. So again, you're just able just to keep it to one side, then you know where they've, they've come from. Um, but I'm guessing that's just sort of part of where the play in the window when they first put them in because I know the other side doesn't have the extra shim in it um, so yeah just be mindful of where, where, what you're getting from where when you're taking this apart Okay, so I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side now and then we should be good uh, to actually start removing the trim itself. So just removing this center cap where the rubber joins, there is this piece and obviously that's just to hide that join. Um, but obviously due to the age of the caravan, it's gone brittle. So that's actually, it was snapped across here. Um, so I'll, yeah, I'll probably need to rethink about how I put that back on afterwards. Um, it will get a replacement or a little bit of silicon and just pop that back in place because you won't see that. Um, and in terms of the bits that you take off, now there is on these an A and a B, and the A faces in the inner side of the caravan and the B on the outer side. Just so again, when you actually pinch that window up, it does that form that seal actually going around the window so yeah a is the inside of the caravan and b on the exterior facing okay so that's everything unscrewed and in their locations so now it should just be a case of pulling out the old And this is just where this tool is going to come in handy because obviously that will go in between that piece, feed the new bit in there and replace it. So like I said, I think that's going to be fine for here, but you're going to need to do the corner bits and then reuse it here to go around. Okay, so I was wondering where that bit was going to be, so yeah. Obviously at the top there, they had it overlapping. Just so again, you don't have to try and find the cut. 
and marry that up. In terms of um, yeah, getting out, I say very straightforward. That's <laughs> that's the easy bit. Now, obviously, we need to feed the new stuff in, and this is where I was talking about where it depends on how well you've kept your rubbers seals. Obviously, you might want to use a bit of silicon with this just to gain just to ease the gliding of that new piece in and along. But whilst you've got it out, it's a good opportunity just to inspect these, just to make sure that they're okay, and also that you've got no water ingress within this space. Um, so yeah, like anything, whenever you've got something apart, just sort of yeah, take the time to think of other things that could go wrong within that space. Um, but no, that looks that looks fine in terms of any damage or anything. So um, yeah, I'll get on and start feeding the new piece in. Um, but um, yeah, now you've got the window that will open, some of this might be easier actually from the, the outside. So um, yeah, we'll have a look at that as well. So how this tool works is, you get your new trim, you put it through the front, and then it will come down out the back, and then you can feed it along, which is fine. Um, and that will go for so so far and then it will stop so then that, obviously the idea there is obviously then you then pull that along however unless you've got some sort, sort of some sort of lubricant on there like say a silicon spray or something you're going to find this hard work to push along um, and you'll probably end up start swearing a bit so like you say as you go probably a few spots of silicon spray just to let it work in underneath just allow this to glide along will make this job a lot easier obviously as I said when you get to the corners something of that shape is not just naturally going to go around that easy so you're probably gonna to have to take it out start it again here on another straight piece feed it back down and when you come to the corners make sure you're feeding enough out you do not want to start and, and sort of have this sort of pinched um, in the corner straight away otherwise you're going to be prone to what the same problem you had before so just make sure there's plenty in here and it's completely flat as you follow that process around but um, yeah they like say this will move as you can see here but I haven't done any silicon um, silicon on this bit so as soon as now I'm not able to move that very easily um, unlike here where I have so again This is where you can just see the silicon spray. So definitely worth putting it on. Will make this job a lot easier. But um, as I'm gonna, as they did before, I'm going to start at the top, work my way down and round. So I'm going to tackle this from the outside, and this is just a decorator's pole I've used with a bit of bubble wrap on top just to hold the window in place but you do get a much better angle at the top of this window so um, yeah I would recommend certainly attacking it from the outside also when you're putting silicon on here you're going to put a bit of tissue in place just to catch if you over spray it obviously if it goes up it doesn't matter but if it goes below you don't really want it on your blind um, and then um, yeah once you first start off where I started here, try and feed it down as much as you can. Um, and then it's just a process of moving it along. But if you've siliconed it, it should just be a case of pushing it like that. But it's, like you say, you do need to make sure that you're putting silicone all the way along. Otherwise it's just not gonna be an enjoyable experience. But um, yeah, let me get the camera set up so I can do the next piece and I'll show you.
So you saw how easy that was to go in. And then, as I said, when you get to the corners, this is going to be a bit of a manual process. Um, just because naturally it will not go around here. And then once you've got to this bit, obviously you can get the tool back up and get it back in place to come back down here. Um, and then it's just about repeating that process.
And as I said earlier, when you get to the corners, push it, push this material, uh, the trim back, so you'll feel it go back into these corners, because like you say, you want to make sure that you're giving as much excess in there, so it's nice. So again, you don't want it to be tight, otherwise, like I say, you're going to get the same problem where once it heats up, it's going to come back out again. Um, but um, yeah, like I say, just push it back, and then to finish off, It should just be a case of sliding this across, bump over the original piece, pull it out, and there uh, you have it. Again, go around, wipe off any excess. Obviously I've gone with the original where the join is just overlapping, but I guess, I'm guessing what you could do here is obviously try and hide it um, where one of the brackets are along here, but um, again you're going to pull it out a little bit so it might cause you more problems. So I've just done exactly what was there before, but that's how easy it should be to replace it. But like I say, you saw how much easier it was with the silicon to get this in. And like I say, you want to be using that silicon to keep these um, rubber seals in good working order anyway, so do two jobs at once. Right, that's that in. Now we can start concentrating on getting the brackets back in place. So when it comes to putting the brackets back on, obviously I'm using my, my marks here to put them back in. And like I say, make sure you've got your bees on the outside your A's on your inside if you've got that set up on those brackets. But again, if you find, like I have, one of my bits of masking tape's falling off, it's not the end of the world, because like you say, just normally they're, they're lined up with this, so just bring this in and see where you get to, but you should be fine, and then it's just a case of repeating that process and getting them all back in place. Alrighty, eh? so that is the new trim in, all the catches back on, using the original screw holes, so um, yeah, really pleased with that, you saw how easy it was, so um, yeah, hopefully that's been useful. That's it for this week's video. Hopefully this process has shown you how easy it is to actually change that trim over and replace it. Um, like I say, the key tools is that inserting tool where obviously it just splits the, the seal apart just so again you can feed that new trim in. And again, you can use it on the, on the um, flat sections and then obviously on the corners, like I say, something rounded, just so again you can get in there, feed it up, um, and just do the corners but as always push in the excess in so again you've got a nice flat um, trim piece in there that's flat to the actual uh, rubber seal itself and again that way you, you're giving it every chance not to have that same problem in future um, but like, take time go round like I say use the silicon spray to actually lubricate those seals themselves so again do the inside as well as the sides and then you can just wipe off any excess so again sort of completing two jobs in one here but that's the biggest window uh, certainly for us to do and you saw how quick and easy that was to actually put in so obviously doing the smaller windows yeah will be a breeze but um yeah hopefully you found this useful and uh, yeah if you've got any questions comments or anything along those lines drop them below and i will come back to you but, and as always if yeah if you've liked the content if you can consider subscribing that'll be great and um yeah we'll call it quits for today and i will see you all on the next one cheers all